Now we will study when we give electric current to a diode, can it convert it into light? Answer is yes and such diodes are known as light emitting diodes, LED. How LEDs work? We use a PN junction that is a diode which has got uh, a construction such that energy gap is larger than 1.8 electron volt. So only that semiconductor, only that PN junction can be used where energy gap is more than 1.8 electron volt, that semiconductor can be used. Why? I will come to know. If we have this energy gap, here are electrons which are conduction electrons, these are holes. If by some device we are sending this electron to this level, how much energy we have to give it? Answer is slightly more than energy gap, then it will go here. Reverse, if an electron is coming back to neutralize the hole, then it will return the excess energy with it. It will return the energy excess with it. How much energy it will return us to us? Answer, slightly less than energy gap. So, energy gap decides the amount of energy which is required to jump here or which an electron will return on recombination. Now, for a light, we need a photon and energy of the photon is given by h nu. Energy of the photon is h nu where h is a constant, Planck's constant. So, frequency of the photon nu is energy divided by h. This gives the frequency. Now, this frequency will be less or more depending upon energy because this is a constant. Now, if we give it high energy to the photon, then frequency will be large. If we give it low energy, frequency will be less. Now, the frequency of photon decides its color. If the frequency of photon is very less, it will not even give sufficient energy to our eyes and we will not be able to see it. If we want to see it, it should have a frequency which is equal to visible light frequency. And when I put this value of frequency of visible light, I find that this energy gap E, this comes to be more than 1.8 electron volt. So, this is red more is the energy required for blue and more is required for violet. Less than this or this is actually infrared after this red starts. So, what should be the energy gap here? When an electron returns here, it gives us back energy in what form? In the form of photon, this. This is the fundamental principle that an electron, which is a free electron in the semiconductor, that free electron has to be recombined with the hole. As a result, this energy will be returned back to us in the form of photons. And if these photons are having this much frequency, then it will sensitize our eyes, we will be able to see them. And for a particular frequency, what do we need? A particular level of energy gap. And what is that energy gap we have calculated? It should be larger than 1.8 electron volt. Now energy gap for silicon is 0 0.7. So if we use a silicon,
for recombination and we take the energy it will not make the waves which are photo waves or which are visible waves so we don't use silicon first again we come back to working how does it work here is a diode this diode is fitted in the forward biasing when we increase the voltage these two comes near when these two are coming near to each other then there this depletion layer becomes less and the potential barrier is lowered down when that happens then what will happen that these electrons can jump back to these holes these electrons can jump back to these holes and they will recombine and when they recombine when they recombine some energy is given out in the shape of photons and that photons go from here now here we put a emulsion or a plastic dome when these photons are striking this dome we use such a material which will emit the light so this light is emitted from here and this is what we call is led light emitting diode so from where do we get the light we get the light from the energy of recombination these are minority electrons these are minority holes so whenever we bring them closer first this electron is promoted to go here because of this electric field so these electrons will go and combine with this this will go and combine with this so minorities just run and recombine and because of their recombination we get photons here and these are the photons which we see which gives us the light and you have seen the energy equation of this and energy level should be more than 1.8 electron volt so in working what will you write it is like this that in forward bias depletion layer shrinks minority charges carrier across the layer recombine and release energy slightly less than energy gap this gives light of different colors and the energy gap has to be more than 1.8 electron volt and therefore silicon and germanium cannot be used so what do we use we use this gallium arsenide gallium arsenide phosphide and gallium phosphide and many more like this which gives us different colors different energy levels so yellow green red and for this gallium arsenide which is 1.8 electron volt this gives infrared and this we are using for remote because in remote we don't want to see the light but we want there should be a light which is sensed by photodiode so this is used for remote controls and these are used for leds but in remote control also we are using leds except that its frequency is less so this is all about leds we get energy by recombination we cannot use leds in reverse bias if we use it in reverse bias then the breakdown voltage is a very dangerous thing if we reach breakdown voltage then what will happen a very large current will pass through it and it will burn out the breakdown voltage for uh, leds in reverse bias is nearly 5 volt which is a very low potential so if we connect leds in reverse bias and the voltage increase more than 5 volt it won't take long that current is so high led will burn off and we say led has fused off so be very careful leds must be connected according to their polarity 
plus to minus and the voltage must be kept according to the specifications. So, this is the case of LEDs, the voltage applied should be slightly more than the energy gap and recombination gives us. So, from here we see the current keeps on flowing and that energy we are getting on photons. So, that start with the recombination of minority, then majority and recombination keeps on happening in this region. So, this is all about LEDs and how they give the light. Now, out of all these uses, the most useful for us is another diode used as solar cell. So, in the next lecture, we will see how the solar cells are working. Thank you.